Remember that in section 3.1 of the book, we saw that there is, it is sometimes useful to actually take a transformation of the data. The general transformation we looked at was box Cox transformations, just to remind you what this looks like. Now, transformations are, use, are useful for mainly two reasons. One is to stabilize the variance. And the other is that if we want to stay on the positive scale. Once we take a transformation, to actually forecast and forecast what we need to forecast, we need to back transform uh, to the original scale um, as we're interested in, in that. However, that creates a problem. And the problem it creates is this. So assume that we start with this distribution on the left and we take a transformation so that we take, um, so that it becomes a symmetric distribution. So we take a log transformation of this positively skewed distribution and it becomes uh, a symmetric uh, distribution. We do what we do, then we need to go from that going back to the original scale. The challenge here is that going back any quantile will map directly into that distribution. So if we take the median on this side, it will map into the median of the distribution on the left. And in fact, any quantile will do that. The problem here is that usually we need for our forecast we need the mean and not the median hence to actually get the mean we need to make some adjustment this is what we're going to show what happens uh, what happens in the next uh, few slides how we do this adjustment let's have a look at an example where we need a where a transformation is, use is useful and this is a very interesting data set this is uh, annual egg prices uh, in us uh, um, in US constant dollars, um, and it's for a dozen of eggs. So there's a few interesting features on this plot. Um, there's a couple of times where egg prices increase rapidly, and this is due to world wars. There's the Great Depression over here. And then when we got over here, we see that in general, egg prices are becoming cheaper. Now, if we were to forecast that and project downwards, let's say with a linear trend, at some point, we're going to cut the zero axis, and we don't want that. All right, we want this to plateau out. Hence, we want to take a, a log transformation. Quite easy to do uh, in Fable. So here I've decided to forecast this series with using a random walk with drift. All I need to do to take the log transformation is take the transformation on the left side variable. And from there on, Fable knows exactly what to do. So I specify log of eggs uh, on the left side. The model is a random walk. I have a drift term. Hence, it estimates a model uh, using all this information. Then I'll take the Mabel and I pass it into the forecast function and a forecast. I'm exaggerating the forecast period here. I'm saying I'm forecasting 50 years ahead, and you'll see why in the next slide. Um, it goes and estimates the model, and it, it, it estimates a transform distribution. All right, it knows how to transform using the log function. And notice here that it actually returns um, the mean of that forecast distribution uh, on the original scale. Okay, so it makes the back transformation, it makes that adjustment that I spoke about, and it gives you that uh, the the mean that you're after. Let's have a look at this graphically. So here I'm generating the 50 steps ahead, so 50 years ahead forecast, and I'm plotting them. So you can see here that the log transformation has worked quite well. Uh, and the effect of it, of course, is that we get this asymmetric distribution in our prediction intervals. Okay, and this blue line is actually the mean. Okay, it is worth understanding a little bit how we make this bias adjustment. So just to recap, back transform point forecasts are medians. If we need the means, we need to do something more. And back transform prediction intervals have the correct coverage, right? So any quantile is uh, maps nicely back, uh, back transformed. Now, what do we do about back transformed means? This is what we do. Let X have mean mu and variance sigma squared. So this X is our transformed variable, okay? Now let F of X be a back transformation function and Y is equal to F of X. So we've started from Y, we've transformed, to x, now we're going from x back to y, okay? So how are we going to do that to get the mean? Well, we're going to use uh, a Taylor series uh, approximation, which 
you know you can approximate any continuous function um, uh, at a point of that function using a polynomial. In this case, we're going to use uh, a quadratic polynomial, so it's an approximation. So y is equal to f of x is approximately equal to f of mu, a constant, a linear trend, and a quadratic trend. Okay. Now the beauty of this is what we can do is actually take the expected value of that. Right. This is what we're interested in. So the expected value of this is well. Let's take each term. This is f of mu is a constant. So expect value of a constant is a constant. Expect value of this second term is actually zero because expect value of the derivative of a constant is is zero, is the constant itself. But expected value of x minus mu is actually zero because expected value of x is actually mu. So mu minus mu equals zero. And this second term, again, this is a constant. Expected value of x minus mu squared is the variance. Okay, so we get this expression. So now let's have a look at what happens using the box Cox transformation that we in, that we're going to use. So remember, this is uh, the what the back transformation looks like. Um, so let's go from y t to f of x. So substitute in for uh, x. So f of x is equal to exponential of x for lambda is equal to zero is equal to this for lambda is not equal to zero. Um, take the second derivative of that because we only need the second derivative. Well, I'm only showing you the second derivative. So, uh, and that is equal to that. Okay. So now let's put all this together. Remember, we want the expected value of y, the expected value of uh, here of f of x. Okay. So um, putting all this together, it is equal to e to the mu plus this term here and this expression here. So basically, um, in this expression, this second term shows the bias correction that we need. Oops, sorry. When lambda is equal to zero. This second term need shows the bias expression that we need when lambda is not equal to zero. Let's have a look at that graphically again. I can actually ask Autoplot to plot uh, both the mean and the median. And hence here we see that the median is this dashed line, which has been adjusted upwards to get the mean using the methodology that I just showed you. <laughs> 